I happen to be an educator myself from the University of Pretoria and a chairperson of the organization that I've just been mentioned, the Black Science Technology Engineering Professionals. So, language is a very important thing for me. Here's the reason why. I am an engineer, you may ask, what does language have to do with anything? Because you guys are even the worst on spelling and everything else. But uh, you will find that you will find that actually uh, we language is, is 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 a critical element in uh, our understanding of the physical sciences, maths in particular. And to that extent, the activities that we do. Uh, in my organization are aimed at helping to improve uh, most of our learners uh, in townships and in rural areas to become channeled into the STEM field. Um, and we are very biased on that because we believe that uh, the science is very critical to economic development. If we really have to really improve as a country, we need to be able to push more of our people into STEM fields. So for that, we are very biased in ensuring that we go to high schools and we try and improve uh, a lot of these educational interventions for most of the students that are finding um, uh, particularly townships. So, um, let me just firstly start by giving you a sense of who we are as uh, BSTEP. So, this organization is a non profit advocacy organization with the aim of advancing black excellence in science, engineering, technology, and innovation. Again, it is something that we feel very strongly about because if you look at where most of the challenges we have as a nation, they lie on the fact that we have, uh, we need to develop most of our people and we need to drive them into sciences. And this is the area that I think you'd find that there's more resistance towards. Uh, there's more people who are saying they don't like to do sciences, they don't find maths interesting, and so on and so on. And yet, if you look at the kind of challenges that we have for the fourth industrial revolution, it requires people who will come with a lot of skills around science. So to that extent, uh, we are fairly uh, strong on making sure that we develop as many people as possible on this in this regard. So what we do is that we develop, uh, we implement uh, support programs in student chapters. So we have student chapters at universities. Uh, currently, we have student chapters at uh, uh, in Houten. We still have to expand uh, to the Western Cape, uh, to Cosmo Natal, and the like. Um, and what we then do with our chapters is that we encourage uh, a lot of uh, professional and business networking, uh, professional networking as well, because we realize that there's a lot of uh, people who after graduating, finishing their engineering, we usually lose them to other fields. So it means the pressure to continue to have sciences becomes even more, particularly if you're talking about you know, black talent that is getting developed. Um, we also do a lot of uh, projects where we look at developing high school students and, and hence uh, the programs that I'm going to talk about later. Uh, okay, that's just an event we're going to have. So, in terms of the intervention projects that we have, we do a lot of work um, that comes in different ways, and we do it with uh, high school students. Uh, the first one that we do there, it's just uh, Saturday school projects where we teach maths. Um, and the people who are doing the teaching are firstly, some of the professional members like myself being a lecturer at the University of Pretoria, and we also have some of our student chapter members who join us in helping to teach maths. Uh, we do maths and we do science as well. And what we found is that we are able to take some of the gaps that we experience uh, at universities. We are able to then structure the curriculum that we do uh, in such a way that it takes into account the kind of development that I think students require. So as an example, we have the student uh, Saturday school projects. And then we have another project, uh, which we partner with an organization called Nkatuto. And what this project does, it looks at uh, development in sciences in a uh, project-based type of setting where uh, it's set up such that it's inquiry based. So what we are finding there, particularly when I'm going to talk later on about English in respect on how we actually deliver some of these programs, uh, we're finding that the system that we're using uh, has a lot of opportunity to start you know, using some of the concepts that have been talked about earlier because usually we conduct them in uh, the home languages of our students that we work with. Um, and really the aim of these two projects that we're doing is firstly to identify very talented individuals uh, that we can then channel to programs where they can get more assistance, uh, get more uh, exposure, but also to improve on the average of uh, the learners. So we find that usually that is the most challenging of things to do because just lifting the average of the performance of students from let's say 
a 38 to a 50 percent it's a lot of work uh, and it requires a lot of motivation it requires coming up with curricula that makes sense it makes it means uh, also looking at what kind of um, um, what kind of mitigating uh, uh, issues can we bring about to assist in a lot of problems and challenges that they have and the problems they have are a lot including uh, language so what is our approach on language um, we see languages just more than vocabulary and I think for inspiration we are using uh, the work of Professor Oki Lee uh, he's uh, from the uh, New York University and I think I like how he defines what language is. To say that language is, it's not just the vocabulary that you use, it's a discourse. Uh, put differently, you can say that discourse is a way in which we talk. And if you know engineers, and I know it because I'm in that industry, we have a peculiar way of talking that other people find foreign. We may be talking English, but it may be just flying over people's heads because in our setup, we have a unique way of engaging. And often enough, we are finding that our learners, they already struggle with firstly English and now they also find that they have to also learn this way of communicating, this discourse that is uh, usually used by engineers and scientists. And that's something that I find that is uh, quite critical. And when we talk about the way of talking, you know, you may be asking, what is that? As an example, you know, I grew up in Mamilodi in Pretoria and, and my father was a Tzotzi guy. I don't know if you guys know Tzotzi Tal. So we grew up talking Tzotzi Tal, not even Sepedi. You know, you'd say, me like the miso. Well, it sounds African, so, but <laughs> but the point is that the point is that it had a lot of mixture of so many things that to understand it was it was almost like an art because it's not just the words that they say. You know, for those of you who know people who come from Pitori, we would, for instance, say things like, uh, if you ask me, is Mamukheti in this room? I would say, I'm sure, Agavalete. But that doesn't mean I'm sure. <laughs> I am definitely not sure. <laughs> so, so you have to understand the fact that the way we communicate, it can be, if you read it on face value, you are going to be misled. You're not going to understand exactly what is it that is the discourse of our engagement. And hence, I find this key word really critical that we're talking about a discourse uh, in terms of engagement. So, um, you know, for those of you who know some basics in science, I, I, I happen to teach uh, uh, two modules at the University of Pretoria. One is called Static Mechanics. Students find it very, very difficult. And part of the reason is because, um, sorry, the, the module is called Static Mechanics. And the reason why it's difficult is because it's applied science or applied physics. So then in this case, we don't require you to remember, um, you know, how to prove a theory or something like that. We require you to apply it. And this is where the challenge comes in, because we find that the concepts that they have to understand, it's critical that they be in place. Otherwise, they won't understand what it is that they're doing. And something that I've observed over the few years that I've been teaching is that quite critical to that is language. For instance, we, particularly as engineers, we can be fairly clumsy on language. We really don't care about language so much. We care that a problem is solved. And often enough, you find that times, you know, we use concepts like free body diagram. You know, a free body diagram is when you draw something and you put forces on it to illustrate the loads of forces that are a system experience. Now, what we call a free body diagram, mathematicians understand it quite differently to how we understand it. And what we're seeing is that often enough, and these are the things that I think the more you teach, you forget that there are these nuances that students may not be familiar with. If I talk about a free body diagram, they may be lost to understand it the way mathematicians define it, not the way I define it as an engineer. Uh, you talk about concepts like just, that term just, it may sound just simple, but actually it can be very confusing. Uh, if I say a car is just about to hit something, you know, I may be implying so many concepts that if you do not understand the, and, and by the way, when I talk about the nuances, this doesn't just apply to people who are speaking English as a second language. It also applies to people who may not understand this particular concept, even though they are first English speakers, because these are concepts that are introduced specifically in engineering with a specific meaning. That whole thing I talked about, the discourse. And we are finding that the discourse really can, can really, in some instances, it can have students who just miss everything that you were trying to teach them because they just miss that understanding of how do we talk. When I say just, what do I mean? 
just like as I was saying that, you know, if I said, uh, Mamukhet is in this room, and I'm sure, you have to understand what I mean when I say that, because, you know, it's the way we talk. Um, so, we are finding that language is, is quite uh, important, and also what is quite important is that uh, when it comes to students, we are finding that they need to use vocabulary a lot, they need to express new ideas that they've learned, and often enough, after they've learned all this vocabulary, if you then ask them to apply, you find that they have this blank stare at you. And again, it comes down to the fact that even though they can understand individually what some of these words mean, they may not always understand what they are applied in discourse. So as I said, second language speakers are already at a disadvantage. Um, science vocabulary in general is already a concern. And thirdly, the whole thing that has been mentioned about educator training, it's very critical at this stage. And that's what we are finding in our interventions that, you know, you go to a school and this is very, it's something that I find very sensitive uh, because what we're doing, we are not obviously owning up the curriculum of the school. We come there on Saturdays and we, uh, it's almost like we augment what the teachers are doing. And what we often see is that there's a lot of misconceptions as well that I think sometimes teachers do uh, convey to learners. So if you come there and you are introducing a concept and you realize they believe or they think about a certain concept in a particular way, but it's so, so incorrect that you now have to retain them or, you know, make them unlearn some of these misconceptions. And those are some of the challenges that we get. And hence, uh, educator training is, is really critical. If we're going to really do something about language, do something about the change of discourse to help um, students, we really have to do a lot of training. That is going to be quite critical. So, Professor Lee from uh, the University of uh, uh, the, the US, from the US, uh, he, he came up with this uh, model which uh, proposes that in this new paradigm, we should consider uh, math, science, and language arts uh, together. So, the implication there is that if you look at uh, the wordings there, may not be clear, but I'll read them out. So, if you look at discourse, uh, you look at uh, the text that you uh, give them, you look at uh, so many other things, the papos, the assessment, the vocabulary, all of that have to be done uh, in conjunction with each other. So you have to start thinking about the maths in a way that infuses the language and the science at the same time. And I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on that. And for us, it's particularly important because you know there's already so many things to take into account. I mean, we're talking mathematical models. Fortunately, as has been explained, the mathematical models uh, in themselves they are a language. Um, you can use English, you can use French, you can use so to, to try and explain as part of the instruction what the language in maths is. Um, so there are these concepts which are mathematical models that students have to learn. Uh, they have to think ab abstractly, they have to visualize things in three dimension. Uh, then they have to do argumentation, they need to do a lot of explanation, communication across disciplines and the like. So all of these, they just add to the complexity of uh, learning. Um, but as I said, language runs through all of them that what, however we engage with students, we find that we have to ensure that in all of these things, uh, concepts on language, how we let it come through, has to reflect in all of these uh, key issues that we uh, put across.